go, I, I go, I go in on every song, go in on every song. Still going in on live mixtape right now. Still going in the mixtape, go get that. That's what I said, pussy, it don't matter, cool. That motherfucking song ain't the first time here, cause it's in <laughs> clubs everywhere. Hell yeah. I appreciate that, man. I some appreciate type love, of man. That custom brightly make you feel some type of way. I'm shining, ho. Oh man, it means a lot to be here today, man. You know, coming all the way from nothing. Get the fuck out my face. 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 I'ma keep one inside the chamber like we'll pop. Never care, spotter, she spotted it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, hold up. I ain't know nothing but the street. I ain't know nothing but the street. Turn shoe off. Used to ride that mark. Yeah, that 34. Never say it's old corn. Everybody want the old corn, but I'm trying to be a better me. Mama Cito was my song. For real. I'm talking about, listen, when I tell you, man, everybody who turned their back on me, I'm so excited. That's what I wanted you to do. Flip flops, I just hit a bitch, no corner. I be serving white, but I don't know jumping. Hey, Rich, tell me, shit, I get crazy. DeQuantus Devante Lamar, aka Rich Homie Quan, was born on October 4th, 1989 in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, where did Rich Homie Quan get that name from? When I first got the name Rich Homie Quan, uh, it had nothing to do with money. You feel me? So it's like, when I broke my word down, I wanted to make sure I could explain, like, well, where did you get the name Rich Homie Quan from? Well, it came from just me and my buddy kidding around, I say about like 11th grade. Me and my buddy Jerry were downstairs in my mom's closet, which was my studio at the time, where I was, I was set up. I don't know, he was in the booth and I was on the computer, and he just like, man, we're going to be called the Rich Homies. So I was like, that's cool. And instantly I was just like, oh, it's going to be money. Rich Homies, that's what's going on now. We're like in the 11th grade, yeah. So I ended up going to jail, and that's when the story behind the name really came. I had a roommate by the name of Chicken, and he was like, I see your name, Rich Homie. And so I was like, what it stand for? And I was like, I ain't really have a meaning. But the first thing he said was, Rich as in spirit, and like it hit my spirit. Like I felt, I felt it opposed to heard it. Like I didn't hear it. I felt it when he said that. Rich as in spirit, homie. As in, you know what I'm saying? More than one, my dogs, my love, my loyalty, my family. Come on, that's me. He was the oldest of three kids, and they would bounce around between their separated parents' homes, from Decatur to Gresham to College Park. He was a big fan of literature growing up, with his favorite author being James Patterson. But his biggest interest growing up was actually baseball, which I find super dope because that's my favorite sport. He attended Ronald McNair Senior High School and had aspirations to play baseball professionally. He was a center fielder and leadoff hitter. He played varsity in his freshman year and eventually earned a scholarship offer from Ford Valley State University. So you, you had a baseball scholarship too? Yes, 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 I did have a baseball scholarship. But you didn't go? No, I didn't go. Nah, I w but I, but I wish I would have went to uh, play baseball. They make a whole lot more money than entertainers. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> no, like music was nothing we could run from. But baseball was just like more like our discipline. We had to play sports growing up. And baseball was the one I was good at. Like I said, I played baseball from four until eighteen. And it was just like over the years as I got through high school, the coaches made, basically like took me out of love with the game. And that's when I just became in love with music. Oh, but I had been in love with music my whole life. It was just like, I think I was running from because of baseball. He of course was always around music and loved it, with The Temptations being some of his favorites. And in terms of rap, he loved The Hot Boys, JT Money, and of course Lil Wayne. He remembers wanting to be just like Wayne, without even knowing what he was saying. The baggy clothes, the bandanas. What he did like to the hip hop culture. You feel me? Like, who didn't want to be Wayne? Like, at some point, man, I was growing braids, trying to look exactly like Wayne. You feel me? Like, and this was before I could even understand what he was saying. I was so lost in his image. Like, that's what I wanted. Like, I want my parents to say, I want braids. Like, then when I realized how talented he was, it was over with. You feel me? He already had me gone from the look. Then, when I, when I was old enough to understand what he could say, like, when I started, just like, got 14, 15, when I could just read lyrics like oh this is what he's saying i felt like it was relatable to the story i was going through in a different part of the world I just kept going through the same thing i'm going through i just felt like it was relatable 
You feel me? So I definitely like Wayne's the GOAT. He started making music around 11th grade, but didn't really think much of it other than just a hobby. In fact, in 2008, he dropped a single called Stay Down featuring the Stack Money Boys. Things came to a stop though when he landed in jail for a year on burglary charges. I come home so hungry, bro. Like, cause I know like this is what I want. I'm so hungry. But all my, so I'm trying to record these jail songs, but I'm like, damn, all my songs talking about jail. Like, yo girl cheated on you, she cheated on me, she ain't picking up the phone cause I haven't got a just to the free world. All my songs sound like jail songs. So it take me a little minute to get just like my feet wet. But when he was released in 2011, Quan began to make up for that lost time, hooking up with the Atlanta crew, loyalty over royalties and became quick friends with member CEO TZ. But TZ's untimely death later in the year put a stop to Quan's planned mixtape debut. He would re-emerge a year later though on the TIG Think It's A Game label. The fly CEO of Think It's A Game Entertainment based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Biggest label in the Southeast region right now, you know what I mean? We pretty much going for the you know, biggest label in the world. Um, I discovered Quan basically on a store in Atlanta called Fly Kicks. And um, I walked in the store one day and I heard his music playing. He had dropped off his mixtape. I came in the store, I heard the music playing. I was like, yo, what is this? Who is this? You know what I'm saying? I was like, this music is crazy. And so um, one of my employees had given me the CD. So I, was, you know, I took the CD, jumped in the car. I started playing it. And man, before I even finished this first song, you know, I called back to the store and was like, get him to the store, I want to sign him and the rest is history. I mean, I hadn't heard nothing like that in a long time. Like his wordplay was, you know what I mean, was, was so solid and, 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 and what he was saying, it came across so well. You know, I, I couldn't do nothing but feel it. And he would drop the mixtape I Go In on every song on April of 2012. And the classic still going in on September 27th with some rich homie classics like investment. And I finally realized that the niggas just wanna see me down. Differences. The difference between me and you is I rather get money and try to flip me something. Choices. I, I made choices in the past to get the world on man. I had to make choices in the past. Can't judge her. Dance on no selling pussy, it don't matter cause you can't judge her. Hurt no more. Every chance on with him, I tell my nigga that he ain't gonna hurt no more. Yeah. Hey, when I tell Better watch what you saying, like, bruh. There's so many bangers on here, it's not even funny. This is where Rich Homie started to gain some buzz in the mainstream a bit, but now it's 2013. Rich Homie Quan would go on to release his deluxe version of Still Going In on February, calling it the Reloaded version, which would become the superior version to me. And this would be the first project I would be introduced to from Quan, as the soon to be smash single, Type Away was on here. I drop top of my wheel, that con driving make you feel some type of way. I know you do. Along with another banger called Party. Now let party, we gon' get started. Too much money in my wallet, I can't even count. And I ain't playing shot, cause I do this on the regular. Okay, okay. No free time. And you're buzzing, man. One of the most searched artists on live mixtapes going in right now. Yeah, trying to, man. Just trying to stay positive, man. You know? Alright, go work every day, no sleep. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. So it's still going in, everyone's fucking with the tape, man. Yeah. I and mean, you even had to like re release it. Yeah, we re released it with a different video, you know what I'm saying? With a different video, what we got, uh, I think we got 5 million views in like 3 days, so like, I think 72 hours. I mean, that was a blessing. Yeah, what's it feel like, man? It feels good, you know, like I said, coming from there, man, all that, all that feel good, man. I have a different genre of people feel with your music, you know what I mean? Me standing the same. Feel real good, though, man. Feel real good, man. I want to talk about that intro track, the investment. Oh yeah, investment. The yeah. Smartest thing you can do is sign yourself. yourself. Yeah. Like, why did you decide to start with that track, and why did you decide to open with that quote, man? Uh, like, it was the realest shit I did when I came home, like for real, like 
I was going to everybody, man. Fuck me on the music. Want nobody believing in me. You feel me? So I feel as if I believe in myself, and I make everybody else believe it. You know what I'm saying? That was just real. Yeah, no, a lot of people feeling that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the one. I would have did not, but I ain't had nothing but a sit in the set, so. Another one, uh, Choices. A lot of people saying Choice is one of their favorite tracks. Oh, yeah. Real personal one. Like, what were you thinking about when you wrote that, man? Honestly, like, I don't even be writing, really, Mike. I just I feel it. What I feel it come from the heart. You feel me? That's why some of it, like, it don't rhyme. When it's so real, they don't got to rhyme, because they going to believe it. You feel me? So, like, I just, I just, I just pour out my soul on it, man. Yeah, some Every of the best, song. Some of the best lyrics don't yeah. rhyme, man. You feel me? Like, they, they just make sense, though. You know what I'm right. saying? So, I ain't trying to I'm just trying to tell my story. You feel me? Did you knock that one out in, like, one take? Or when, when oh, did you record that? Oh, uh, I, I did that in, to be honest, I did it in, uh, in Houston. You know what I mean? Okay. I was down here in Houston. I did it in Houston at my buddy in our house. So, I'm like, it was good, though. Oh. Yeah, and then I uh, can't judge her. I wanted to talk about that. Oh one. yeah, that's like, what's the motivation behind that, man? Did you meet? Did you really like meet a girl at Magic and write I that? I wasn't. She wasn't at Magic, but she was at a strip club. Though I didn't know Magic be private, <laughs> so I know if I get Magic girls on, it'll be jumping. But yeah, Magic, it was really fun. It wasn't so much for the strip club. The, the, the encouraged girls to get money, though. You feel me? Don't depend on nobody. You can, you can do it on your own if you want to. Do it. Yeah, no. He would be alongside Trinidad James at shows at the time and would have some guest appearances on Gucci Mane's Trap House 3 mixtape. I can feel when the hater make a sound Vibration, huh? I'm chasing Motherfucker paper hey. Bruh, and I remember this summer like it was yesterday, man Those hot summer days with my iPhone 5 Scrolling through Instagram when the logo used to look like this And all the pictures and shit used to look like this Remember those times? Bruh I used to work at Uspa in Times Square, the bootleg polo joint, and the song Type Away was all I used to hear, bro. Like every day, just from cars driving by or people with their speakers walking around. That song was everywhere. This year was the year Rich Homie Kwan was really blowing up, and he was starting to do shows left and right. Getting a feature on Two Chains' album. Two Chain, what it do? In the living room, full of that paper. Used to have a little room. Now it's a house and a. YG's album, which was originally his song, he stated in an interview with Academics, which is now four times platinum. It ain't going in. It's on with my nigga, my nigga, my nigga. A gold record with August Alsina, Ghetto. And another gold record with Yo Gotti, I know. An unreleased track that he dropped this year called Narcotics was my shit, bruh. It still is whenever I come across it. Stay tuned, because on November 26th, you do not want to miss me. I showed you I go in on every song. I proved to the streets I was still going in. And I promise you, I never stopped going in. Pound sign. That right, too. I Promise I Will Never Stop Going In, classic by the way, dropped on November 26, 2013. It had nothing but banger after banger on it, man. Good times for real. And I remember during this time, people were comparing Rich Homie to Future, saying that he sounds just like him, and I kinda saw it when they spoke, but in the music, I didn't really see it. He even mentions it in one of his songs. And I'm the future nigga, I see your past. Who the fuck told you I wanna be your ass? With these diamonds looking like water. Hey, why me walk through? Hey, why me walk through? She asked about it. I'm 
gon' be like blah 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 blah. Once you try to argue with me, I be like blah 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 blah. Have a right time, take piss, tell the fuck, get the fuck out my face. Get the fuck out my face. In fact, I wouldn't say this was the first time I ever heard Thug, cause I first heard him on a Waka and Gucci song called Fell. But this was the first time I ever was like, oh shit. Yeah, this dude about to be a superstar. His wordplay, his flow was so unique. And I remember being like, damn, they complement each other so well. I'd love for them to make more music together. And we'll get into that in a few. Cause I tried to make this shit work. Man, 2014, one of my favorite years of all time. It was the year I got my first car. Overall, it was just fun for me. And it seemed as if there was like a new hit almost like every week in 2014. Or am I bugging? <laughs> Vine was at its peak. Yeah, good times. Foul call, no foul ball, play foul people. I tell Bone that I'm a young nigga worth some car lots. Two cell phones and a pistol. I call shots. I got Dutch matching for the Kush smokers. Hold a register for the Bush totals. Fuck blacks with Bush totals. Fuck that we took over. I bust back like a foot soldier. Rich Homie was part of a pretty underrated double XL freshman class. I feel like this year is pretty slept on when people look back at all the years of Double XO. And it was just another sign for better things to come for Quan this year, as he would go on his first official tour under the Influence Tour, alongside Wiz Khalifa, Ty Dolla Sign, and others. I'm talking slow because I'm high, man. This way, right here. I'm gonna be turned up, right? What I'm gonna say it again? What oh, is it? Well, hey, it's a whole different genre, cause you know a lot of them club shows. No disrespect, but I ain't never seen them in them white people in my life, man. 2014 summer was ran by this one song. Man, Lifestyle was truly something special and the beginning of something magical. Life was just good when that song was blasting everywhere. That's really what it felt like to me. To me, they were like PB and J, bro. They just sounded perfect on the instrumentals. Bro, Thug and Quan at this point was everyone's favorite duo and Rich Gang was truly on top. Say what you want about Birdman, but he knew there was something special between the two. So the legendary classic mixtape, Rich Gang The Tour Part 1, finally dropped on September 29th, 2014. With so many bangers on it, it's crazy. War Ready? Bruh. Top 10 Rich Homie Quan song in my opinion. Some of you niggas be scary cause it went calm down to it, but you niggas ain't ready. All these drugs I'm thought out. I love my bitch, I can't go it out. Wanna give him a seat, no, send fly. Down to the ground like a motherfucking pussy. Land dragon feeling like Louis Roy, I can catch a bullet. And of course, we can't forget the sleeper smash, Mama Cedar, which Quan said in an interview with Academics that that was originally his song. Then Travis and Thug eventually got on it, and it ended up being on Trav's mixtape days before Rodeo. And they put Rich Homie's verse in the back when it was originally in the beginning. Although the way it turned out, I'm sure it was for the better. It's an amazing song. And I ain't kidding the wine, but that my Mama Cedar. Hey, Mama Cedar. Throughout the end of 2014, everything seemed to be going great between Quan and Thug. At least that was until Thug called Rich Homie his hubby on an Instagram post. They were still cool with each other, but social media and the media in general started taking this and running with all kinds of different narratives, calling Thug and Rich Homie Quan gay. Here are some responses from both of them to what was going on at the time. Everybody wants to know what you mean when you call your homies your baby or your hubby, your lover. 
it's a language. It's nothing stupid or fruity going on. It's the way we talk, it's the way we live. Those are my babes, no my lovers, no my hubbies, whatever you want to call it. Is it strategic at all, you know, to get people talking about you? Because you are somewhat of a new artist. However, I don't know. I don't know a yes or no to that. That's a hard question. Hubby or whatever the expression is, people, they start circulating the rumors that uh -huh. you guys were gay. Yeah. What, what did you, or how do you respond to that? First and foremost, like, I try not to get into all the comments because, you know, it would be so many. Yeah. But at the same time, I see them. Mm -hmm. But I feel as if, like, if I respond back to that, that's yeah. what they want me to do. Everyone in Atlanta know mm -hmm. me, no young thug, is not gay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, thug, with thug, he's different. Mm -hmm. It's just it's slang. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, I don't take nothing, never to nothing. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I know I ain't gay. Yeah. Yeah, everybody know I ain't gay. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I really don't get it. So that really makes me, like, get a joke out of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's just so funny how people will take anything and run with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I really don't get in that, man, now. So now nah, I'm not gay. I ain't... I don't got nothing against gay people. Yeah. Right. But yeah. don't try me with that. You yeah. know what I mean? Don't call <laughs> yeah. me yeah. like that. And now comes 2015, where Quan had an interview in February where he mentions how he wanted to take a step back from the Rich Gang stuff and focus more on himself and get back to Quan. By the way, Rich Gang was never an actual duo, like legally. There were no paperwork or anything. It was just them getting in the studio, making great music together. He never signed to Birdman or anything like that. He stayed independent with T.I.G. But I have been focusing more on myself. I've stepped away from the risk game a little bit just to get back to corn. Right. Yeah, people want corn back, man. I think you know what, right. though? I think, I think. <laughs> you know, I'm, think, I, you know you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, didn't like, I didn't want to I, I was like, yeah. I was like, I don't know about, like. Yeah, it's, it's cool, it's cool for the moment, but. Yeah, it's really a moment thing. Like, don't give off in that sauce, yeah. my nigga. I'll keep the same thing. And I ain't lost in the sauce, that's why. No, I know, but we just, you know. Yeah, I know y'all like my big brother. We just saying, like, you know, niggas like, you see that shit and, you know. And I guess Thug didn't like that Quan said that and ended up calling him bitch homie Quan on stage. And that seemed to have blindsided Quan too. What about you and homeboy? Uh, young, about, young Thug. Young Thug. Uh, that, was that real? Because it sounded like he was talking oh, no. about you. Stupid lame nigga trailing. That bitch homie Quan. Hey, Yeah, yeah, he was talking about me, but I'm going to tell you like this. I wish the best, of, you know what I mean, the best success, man. I still love him like a brother, bro. The same and I, I wish you the best, uh, best success, though, man. No hard feeling, man, because I'm bigger than that. But next subject. Because still to this day, he always claimed that there was never no beef between him and Thug. It could always just be a conversation. Nobody truly knows the full story, because Thug and Quan both in interviews never really go into full detail, and we probably will never know. But later on this year, Quan did have something to say to a fan, and he mentions Thug's name. Hold up though, let's go back to the beginning of this year. Rich homie Quan starts doing a certain dance that started to get the ladies to go crazy. So once that happened, the DJ just kept encouraging it and Quan said, fuck it, and it caught on. Originally, he was doing the dance to the song Milk Marie. What is it? I said, what the fuck? Yo, stop it. Let's just stop it right now. Cut the fucking malarkey. Then he started implementing the dance to Flex, which would become his next big hit. And the song was actually a leak from a DJ. Quan didn't even really like the song, nor did he think it was gonna blow up the way that it did. Cause he said it wasn't his original rich homie Quan sound. But ironically, it became his highest charting song. It's crazy too, because he recently just said that that's his biggest regret of his career. The dance and the song Flex. <clears throat> What's one of your biggest regrets? It ain't even got to be like music industry, just life shit. What's biggest regrets? Biggest? Probably um, releasing that Flex song, man. To me, it was never like my strong factor. 
That was a hit, though, bro. It was yeah, a hit. Yeah, that shit's still a hit. It's still a hit. Still you right. Yeah. You performing. And I didn't have credit yeah. control. Yeah. You feel me? Like, yeah. And that's just to be real. Yeah. And I ain't like, I played the touch. I did, did, like, it's my biggest song when you look at it. It's like, <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? I can't just throw it under the bus like that, but. The dance was so big that a song called Hit the Quan happened, bro. Hit the Quan. Hit the Quan. Hit the Quan. The dance has been retired. Yeah, the dance has and been listen, retired. the dance okay. has been retired. Ain't nobody hit corn. Okay. So you can stop saying hit the corn. Corn okay. ain't never been hit. Okay. Look, at, yeah. look at my face. Corn. The, the, dance the dance has been retired. The dance is retired. All right, man. Now I really feel some tired. Quan at this point kept his foot on the gas though, releasing his fifth mixtape, If You Ever Think I Will Stop Going In, Ask Double R, on April 28th, 2015. And I'ma be honest, when this first dropped, I felt like I was the only one, at least that I knew, or everywhere else in New York, that was bumping this on the daily. And it seemed as if the buzz was starting to die down a bit for Rich Homie. And respectfully, this mixtape was okay. There were some skips on here for me, but there were some real standouts though. I wish he would have made music videos for these tracks, bruh. Like the songs I Swear. I get. I get the pitch. I get you nips. 15 shots. Hey. 15 shots to the head. And the song Daddy. Daddy is a real emotional track because he dedicated it to his pops who was shot at his barber shop months prior. My daddy had got shot both times. Immediately until it started coming down my eyes and I started crying. Side note too, they put flex on this tape and I found it mad funny what the DJ says on this version. Hey. Nigga, this the single. Oh. It's all I do. What you thought I was gonna give you the no DJ version? Daddy. Oh. Daddy. Ah. And around this time was when a shit ton of Rich Homie and Young Thug tracks from the Rich Gang era just suddenly leaked. Like at least a hundred of them out of nowhere. Rich Homie said in an interview as to what happened. He said, This was one of the times when Birdman didn't pay the studio, so the studio leaked all the music. They said Bird didn't pay them, so they leaked all the songs, bro. It might have been two songs out of all those songs that I really cared about. And once those two songs got leaked, I was like, damn. Those were gonna be on the album. That was the lesson. Quan, get your own studio. No music getting leaked. Some of the unreleased tracks that I was bumping were these. A pretty big song for Rich Homie this year was a song The Most, which originally had Thug on it, but he took him off of it. Twenty fifteen had some killer features from Quan too. So during this time around the end of the summer, people were curious as to where the actual album was at. Cause as hot as he was at the time, he still hadn't dropped his debut album yet. Well, in August, he actually started suing his own label, TIG, for $2 million. He sued the CEO, Fly, for allegedly swindling his royal riches. He felt as if he wasn't rightfully paid for the biggest hits he had. And it was at this point where, yeah, he wanted to keep dropping, but the people in his team 
was telling him like, yo, chill out on that. Cause you haven't even been paid for your biggest hits yet. So for a year, he settled it in court and it was finally over a year later in August of 2016. So throughout that whole time, he wasn't really able to drop any music, but we'll get into that. Since he couldn't drop any music on iTunes or anything, he ended up dropping two mixtapes in the end of 2015. DT Space made this. My little sister couldn't stand me. My little brother, my best friend, he sit down, was outstanding. Got pulled from my plug like life support. My knees hurt, yeah, that was shooting dice, you do. D-boy like shut it. Wrist on dumps are retarded. My skinny and ABTA still going in. Cause I got bread by the motherfucking loaf. Shot to get head on the motherfucking loaf. Shot that she was scared, so I kept it on the low. Every day that I wake up, a nigga never ever scared. I thank God when I wake up, cause a nigga could have been dead. A minute is one of the hardest Rich Homie songs to this day to me. It been a little mini nigga, how you feel? I know you. It been a little mini since I went back to my old self. Now, in 2016, I wouldn't say Quan stopped going in because he was still doing features and doing shows. If you got a man, you can leave his ass at the crib. Yeah. Fucking with your baby mama, hungry, how you feel? He was just going through the stuff he was going through with his label. He wasn't dropping anything on his own for the mainstream audience. So to a lot of people, he took a step back and went on a little hiatus. And you know how the rap game is, fam. Fans, quote unquote, are fickle. And I say fans like that because were they truly your fans to begin with? If they just leave you or move on to the next artist? Plus the casual fan? Bruh, once they leave, it's super hard to get them back. Unless you get an undeniable smash hit. Getting those fans that left you to come back is almost impossible. So the people who really stayed down with Rich Homie during this time was his diehard fan base. Now, sorry, I gotta talk about this, Rich Homie. I don't mean to do this to you, bruh, but we gotta talk about it. This really did not help Rich Homie's rep or buzz at the time at all. During the VH1 honors, he was supposed to rap Biggie's song, Get Money. To be fair, though, it was supposed to be Fabulous that was gonna do it, which would have made way more sense. But Lil' Kim called up Rich Homie, and you know he couldn't say no to Lil' Kim. He said he used to have posters of her on his wall. He even had the sweater and the Tims to be like Biggie and all that. But that boy didn't know any of the lyrics fam <laughs> he tried his best to maintain his cool on stage it was an embarrassing moment for him for sure and charlemagne even gave him donkey of the day the following morning donkey of the day for tuesday july 12th goes the rich homie Quan. but yo they did him dirty by the teleprompter going black when they promised him the lyrics was gonna be up there and to be fair he not even a new york dude it just didn't make any sense that's like if they had lil tj right now do a ti or an outcast verse or some shit in atlanta like it just doesn't make sense bro and yeah to be fair i mean he wasn't really dropping anything during this time would rich homie have maintained his relevance slash buzz had he not took this break maybe yeah sometimes that break could make or break your trajectory now with that being said he ended up signing with motown records in the beginning of 2017 signed a boss deal not an artist deal you have a new record deal uh -huh. i don't even know if it's a record deal you have a new deal period yeah. with capital motown yes. explain why i think that first of all i think that surprised a lot of people mm -hmm. you signing to that label so first why that why that label? Out of all the labels you could assign to? I would definitely say, like, I wanted to go to Motown and Capital because I had been to every building. And when I went in all those buildings, it was like, it was all the same. All the Jets come in and shake your hand, they smile. And I just felt like that was getting played out. Not to downplay them, but I was just tired of the same old song. But when I went into Motown Capital, it's just different. Like, everyone wasn't working. I and mean, people were like, hey, how you doing? They're really stopping to see what you're doing. Opposed to everybody not getting in one room, smiling, you know what I'm saying? I just felt as if it was a building I could take over. It was a building I could make mine. And I just felt comfortable. And I just, you know, like some spots you go, you're like, this it. You don't even got to second guess it. And I know people like that. He went to Motown, why? I felt as if it was a building I could take over. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? My situation is different from other artists. Like, we're, we're not, none of us are the same. But I felt as if that's what worked for me. And it was crazy to me. At this point in time, Rich Homie seemed irrelevant in the mainstream when just a year and a half ago, damn near, he was on top of the rap game. It's really a shady industry, fam. Once they see that you're not as hot, 
them phone calls stop coming in, those features get less and less. It ain't even about talent anymore at that point. Either way though, he said it is what it is. It's time to drop this next project and see where it goes from there. So he ended up dropping a mixtape called Back to the Basics on April 14th. The same day as Kendrick's Damn, actually. It peaked at number 74 on the Billboard charts. And this tape was solid, man. Back to the basics, man. And I won't let my fans know. I see it all. I see it all, man. You know what I mean? So stay tuned. Because we got more. We got more. We got more. Songs like Lord Forgive Me. Pull up in that brand new Billy Drop Talk. And I got four oh, with me. Never made it. Don't take that thing to the head. Run like you never made it. Shine like you never made it. Replay. I got two bitches on call, no three way. You ain't cash shot, nigga. Yeah, that with the least safe. Safe. A lot of rubber bands in the safe boy. Home by nothing, I'm dirty. Yeah. And straight? That's one of my favorites of Rich Homie. I see baby my brother, I know it may seem hard, but I gotta make your family shake. In May of this year, Quan was actually facing 30 years in prison after he got arrested with four other people on felony drug charges after being stopped at a checkpoint in Georgia. Police claimed that they had a bunch of drugs and weapons in the whip. Quan was being charged with felony drug possession with an intent to distribute. But thankfully, the judge signed off on it two years later, bruh, and everything was dropped. Let's get it. If you ever think I was falling off, don't let that money fool you, but ain't shit. I like to record like around 12 p.m., 2 p.m. ish. Oh, interesting. I like to record early. If I'm at home, I don't need an engineer. But when I'm in the studio, I got to have an engineer. Engineer, candles, fruit snacks. My buddies, Hennessy, we engineer fruit snacks. Ain't no telling what we'll come up with. I would say working on a full studio album. It's just different because like on the mixtape, it's just basically me having fun. But like with the album, I'm more in tune with what words I pick because I know everyone's listening. I'm more in tune with my beat selection. You know, I want the beats to ride. I want like continuously. I don't want you to have to skip a track. And I just want it to be perfect. When I first heard the beat, Cassius J, uh, we was in Atlanta, Georgia at the Lemon Street Studios. I think this was like the second beat he played. The first one, he was like, bro, I made one for you so hard. I was like, it's hard, but it ain't harder than this one. So after we did the song, I think it was like two weeks after that, he called like, hey man, I think Future got this same beat. I was like, man, we can't do that. So he tried to clone the beat. I was like, bro, we're gonna buy the beat. If Future gonna buy it, we, we just wanna buy it right now. We don't wanna play no games. So we're gonna push this, we're gonna be my single for my first album. I'm just excited about me dropping a debut album. Like, I've been doing music for a minute now. I've never dropped the album. It's more for like a check off my bucket list. And I want to give me one of those binders. You know what I'm saying? Like when my son get old, like dad, what's that? So it's special. Man. In the beginning of 2018, Rich Homie was, believe it or not, gearing up for his debut album, Rich as in Spirit. And man, I was looking forward to this album so much, and I wanted it to be great. I knew without a doubt Rich Homie wouldn't disappoint though, and he definitely didn't. Swallow my pride, I realized that it won't hurt to call him. I watch a blossom from a seed to a perfect flower. I got some stories I'm telling, but they not made up. Don't try to doubt me, just spare me, don't want that fake love. I put a lot of these niggas on, and I still ain't got my credit, but I ain't mad though. Cause I could've been mad, bro. I'ma let my boy Hello Yassin give y'all his thoughts on it. What's poppin' y'all? Rich homie Quan started his comeback, I'd say, when Back to the Basics was gearing up to release. This is after he had signed a new deal with Motown Records, and he was doing interviews again, mainly on DJ Vlad. This had been years since he had released. He was dealing with legal issues related to Flex and him not having been paid from the major hit that allowed him to eclipse Young Thug at that point in time. However, his main debut album, which was Rich As In Spirit, would release in 2018. And disappointingly so, it got almost no coverage. Keep in mind, he was signed to Motown at this time. And this album, when I took the time to listen to it, it was 19 songs. The whole album, you could just listen to it through completely. However, the main two songs that I would say really stuck out to me were, were Reflecting and Achieving. Rich Homie Kwan's always been known for his flows, and 
a lot of people remember him mainly for his work alongside Young Thug, whether it was Rich Gang the tour or the songs they had done together. But Rich as in spirit showed a different side of Rich Homie Kwan, not so much like Flex, which we did have a song or two on there that were more uppity club type songs but we got a lot more reflection from a more mature rich homie kwan that was sending more of a positive message as well as telling the story on where he had been the past couple of years it was a disappointment that this didn't get much attention i tried speaking about it multiple times that same year although it didn't get much traction back then either however he wouldn't stop going in no pun intended and it led to him consistently releasing since then eventually leaving motown records and gearing back up for another comeback one thing that rich homie kwan didn't get enough credit for was the lack of auto tune that you hear throughout rich as in spirit as well as the majority of his catalog he is a flow mastermind He's not too great with melodies. That's not his forte. He can harmonize, drop some melodies here and there on some tracks. But when it comes to flows, Rich Homie Kwan is nearly unparalleled. Probably had to be top 10 within that era of music that came out alongside Future. I definitely would say he was better than Young Thug when it came to flows. Young Thug would manipulate his voice in different ways, and he did was assisted with auto-tune and things like that, which Rich Homie Kwan didn't take advantage of as much. And Rich Homie Kwan did an excellent job on Rich As In Spirit with dropping good music that was great to listen to, as well as some club hits, some upbeat songs, while mixing in good writing in terms of maybe not lyricism, so to speak, but some storytelling, some reflecting, some positive messages without coming across as corny. And that's why I think this project I always recommend it to anybody when they say Rich Homie Kwan come back or what happened after he left because it's such an excellent starting point. And while it is 19 tracks, it's under an hour and delivers the entire Rich Homie Kwan experience at the best time period in his life for it to have been delivered. Hey, good looking, bro. Appreciate your input for real. So after the album came out, he announced his Riches in Spirit tour. And you already know I was in that shit. He performed at the Gramercy Theater here in Manhattan. There weren't too many people there, but I'll tell you one thing. We all were some real fans singing word for word. <laughs> Yeah. 
What you gonna do, bro? I'm gonna everybody like, like, put your fucking muscle. I'm gonna make like this because I'm fucking drunk. <laughs> and I'm gonna scare the nigga, but wherever I go, I'm gonna go around the place. I see you, bro. Quan kept his foot on the gas with another solid mixtape called The GIF on October 4th, 2018. And I remember bumping this tape every day for a while. Especially the song Wake Up. Oh man, that shit is motivating as hell. I don't know if I might see tomorrow. I don't know if it promised. Yesterday it gone, so today what we gon' conquer. Skeletons 2 with Lil Boosie? That's my shit. It's just so soulful. Got some skeletons in my closet, I'm afraid to bring them out. Got some secrets I can't tell you, they on my mind, I think about. He was also featured on a YFN Lucci song this year. This shit was fire as hell, too. In 2019, Rich Homie Kwan was on Chill and didn't really drop anything that whole year. I mean, he was on DaBaby's debut album on a song called Celebrate, which was dope. Hey. But he did give us a project at the end of the year though called Coma and he dropped it independently. Motown at this point was no more. But like, yeah, they so quick to be like, if they don't see an artist on the scene and act, they'd be like, you yeah. fell off. Yeah, nah. So where Quan being for all the naysayers and saying um, you fell off, bro? For everybody who's saying I fell off, first and foremost, I would say I didn't fall off. I okay. fell back. All right. You know what I'm saying? Still on the road, still delivering my message. Just stand in my lane. I don't got to be loud to do it. You know right. what I'm saying? The loudest one in the room, you the broken. Right. So if I be the quietest one, hopefully I can be the richest. Right. But you see, like, nowadays we live in, I, I guess, what we could call, like, a microwave culture. Where yeah. Everything is just, like, so quick. It's yeah. just, like, so if you're not doing 100, you're not dropping 100 mixtapes, 100 albums at one time, how is it? Because I know you're still recording and everything. Yes, of Like, course. how is it, like... How do you not feel the pressure to be like, I didn't fall off. Look at this. Let me drop this. Let me drop this. Let me drop that. Me, man. How do I deal with it? Wake up every day. Thank God. Look at my surroundings. You feel me? Like, that's right. how I know I ain't fall off. Like, every day I wake up in a beautiful home. So, like, the same. What pressures you not to drop the music, though, sometimes when you be like, all right. I know sometimes there's a method, there's a method yeah. to the artist's madness. I would say, like, it's really not a pressure. It's just, like, it has to be a strategic plan for one. So, right. like, even if I just want to drop some music. Like, fast, I know I need to get with my team and discuss a strategic plan before I just put the music out. Because right, right. even if I just put the music out, like, I'm not going to benefit from it. Right. So I want to make sure I be benefit from it. Like, I think that's a lot of mistakes I was making in the past. Like, a lot of stuff I was doing, I wasn't benefiting like the way I could have been benefiting right. from it. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So now just like, yeah, of course, if I could, I would want to drop every hot song after I do it. Like, man, we got a business still to worry about. Like, it's a lot of fans who don't know a lot about the business that goes right. on. So, so, Word on the Street, this is a whole, this is a whole new project uh -huh. that's out right now. Yeah. Coma is yeah. independent. Yeah, independent, man. This is really, like, my first time ever been independent since I've been a rapper. So, like, I don't got to split my money with nobody. That's what independent means because a lot of us be saying independent, but we really not independent. Mm. We signed to an independent label, which you don't own. You know right. what I'm saying? So, when I was saying independent the first time, I was saying I was signed to an independent label. 
You feel me? So like now I'm, I don't have to split my money with nobody. Mm. It's like what Dame Dash says. If it's not your money that's being put up, then you just really yeah. supervise. Like, and then that's just being real. Like, you rent it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being, everything you do is going to have to be paid. You know what I'm saying? You see all these independent labels. But how many of these artists created the independent label? Very scarce. And, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's very right. small. Like The songs Stressed and Old Quan are songs that I still play on the regular today. I'm in a coma. This is one of the reasons I made Stress. First and foremost, what got me to pitch Stress to be on the mixtape or the EP, whatever you want to call it. I was just, it was old, it was probably like two years old, three years old. And when I heard it, it was basically like how I was feeling now, like up to date, you feel me? I was like, oh, this got to be on there. But at the time, it only had like one verse on there. So my second verse, I did the second verse, just scrolling through music. Like I was really scrolling, looking for a session for a song that was supposed to go on the tape called Exhausted, but I couldn't find it. So going through all them sessions, I end up finding stress. And the song was just so hard, I just like just got to be on there. Trying to keep my mind on that money, trying to keep my head straight up. Mama told me don't leave that The reason I made Old Corn, well, I don't even know the reason I made it, but I was definitely in LA, and it definitely had to be like one of my favorite, favorite, probably like my favorite of them all. Only because like the name, you know what I'm saying? Like Old Corn, everywhere I go, like, bro, you gotta go back to the old you, bro. You gotta, you know, your old shit was here and do, do, do. Yeah, I hear that, but like, this is like music. Like, like I just, like I said a while back, like it's music. You don't want me to evolve, you don't want me to become better. You don't want me to like, I'm no longer a new artist. You see what I'm saying? So it's almost like, just, me just let my people know, like, trust me, you feel me? Like, I hear what y'all saying, but, and it's still my dream, you feel me? Like, this still what I wanna do. Still making the music I love. You feel me? I just gotta get in tune in my world. It's coming my world. You feel me? Cause I ain't changing. I'm the same me. You know what I'm saying? Freddy Krueger and his version of Redbone goes crazy too. I can't even sleep. I've been having bad dreams. I've been seeing Freddy Krueger, man. Only for the twice. Don't know what she tastes like. Half a girl rough. She tell me play night. The project overall I felt was slept on for real, for real. And just another example of great quality music getting overlooked. To say Rich Homie Kwan was underrated at this point was pretty much an understatement. Now fast forward to 2021 and Rich Homie kind of teased us with a little comeback with dropping a couple music videos on us. I ain't dropped in a little minute, shit, my fans miss me. Yes, sir, you dropping a little minute, my fans. Yes, sir, we miss you, bro. We need a mixtape. We need an album. But that was really it. He didn't really go full throttle with it and capitalize off of these. It's like he had one foot in and one foot out. I thought he was gonna hit us with a project or something, but I guess not. That was until 2022 came along. I ain't put work in these streets just to get killed by him. In 2022, that boy said, "I, right, I'm tired of this shit. It's time to take over again. He got himself a new distribution deal, working with that boy Troy Carter, who's a well-known music slash talent manager and is actually the global head of creator services over at Spotify. And you could just tell the vibes are different this time around. His team is making sure they're doing everything right this time. He's on a new promo run and he just looks happy overall. He's doing interviews over on Sway, Academics, Hoffa's podcast, the 85 South comedy show, like he's everywhere right now. He's even on Billboard's YouTube as well. I don't want to call it a comeback, more of a recentering myself. Mm -hmm. So music always been there. I just like the original sound. I just evolve with my storytelling. And he even did a sold out show in Atlanta for a 10 year anniversary of his mixtape still going in. That show looked lit as hell, bro. I wish I would have went to that. I also found this question that Sway asked Quan to be pretty interesting. Have you been humbled in this process? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, when them when them shows slow down. Yeah. Mm. And them uh, back ends ain't what they used to be. <laughs> it should definitely humble your ass down. It's a humble your ass down, yeah. right? And at the same time, like I was telling somebody yesterday, I think a lot of the new artists be thinking like the game need them. 
The game, I, mean, I need the game. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't, the game don't need me. Mm-hmm. Like, I appreciate the game. You know what I mean? Like, so I take it different. I need this, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I appreciate it. So, like, nah. They be acting like, yeah, the game need that me. Man, round of applause. Uh, oh, the game, the game don't need you. Too. The game don't need no, but the game gonna be there, bro. Man, what, 50, what how many, 52 years later? Yeah, 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 bro. Okay, the game then. gonna be okay, there. Then. Like, you know, the game don't change the players, dude. You gotta put the game don't change the players, dude. And on his birthday on October 4th, he ended up dropping an EP called Family and Moolah which peaked at number four on the Apple Music charts. And this project is solid, man, with Crazy being the lead single. I was in the AMG doing 130. I don't need really, so I need 30. Chain dangling. All these choke around my neck, they down and strangle me. We took the rich nigga, you don't know what it took to get here. Can't hit the block without the shine, what it took to get here. Another one, another one, another one. I want another one, another one, another one. Ain't that the same? I ain't on no one. And despite this project being so solid, the crazy thing is, this is just an appetizer or a teaser for what's to come next. I can't wait for his next actual album. And yo, they need to release Rich Homie projects on vinyl, bruh. Like, for those who know me, know I collect vinyl records. Like, what's good? Why is there no Rich Homie Quan projects on vinyl? Like, that needs to come to an end. But anyways, yeah. I just be on my credit, man, because I can hear me in some so many of these new artists. I can hear me in all of them. Yeah. Never don't nobody ever say, yeah, I listen to corn. You know what I'm saying? But they don't get to me or nothing like that. I could put it like this. As far as Atlanta, like with the Rich Gang and all that, I'm top three in the new generation and I'm not three. Mm. That's what I'm telling you. I believe you. that. Yeah. I like, believe that, man. You got like... Baby Baby up there, Future up there, Thug up there, me up there. That's the debate. You got it. I'm saying they ain't gonna tell me. They ain't gonna tell you that. That's a debate. I'm top three, but I'm not three. Right. What? Why? <laughs> Look at his face. Mayo ain't eat. He's bro. disgusting. Like, if a nigga eat mayo, man, I can't say that because like I went, I went marry a girl who eat mayo. That's deep, ain't it? What? That means you ain't got no respect for me. You can't fuck with me if you eat. you can't love me the way you say you do. You can't love you if you, your girl can't love you if she eats mayonnaise. You can't. You can't, nah. you serve no. a different God. You serve, you serve a different God, man. So yeah, man, Rich Homie Kwan. I can honestly say that I've seen this dude evolve throughout his career, both as a man and musically. He's been through a lot of ups and downs, but he always stayed true to himself, despite all the negative comments and people saying he fell off, this and that. What I respect the most is that he never sold out, never begged for a feature, for a big hit, None of that. For the most part, he's humble with it and knows how to carry himself in this rap game. I'm sure I'm speaking for all of you when I say, we just want to see him win, man. We just want to see that boy on top of the rap game and have his talents shine through the mainstream again. I'm looking at influential. I'm looking at impact. lyrics. I'm looking at impact. Yes, sir. I'm looking at all that to like to determine why I'm top three and I'm not three. Yes, sir. You feel me? I know like what I did was so influential, it went on people's head, but I hear it and I see it every day. Man, listen to me, bro. Man, stand on that shit. That right, too. 